Okay guys, uh, welcome to this quick little tutorial on how to uh, work out this problem that you've been posed with. Um, let's first of all look at the, the gear trains and the pulley trains that are involved and work out what the task is actually asking us to do. So if we have a look here, we've got um, a motor running at 100, 180 RPM, which is connected via an axle to a spur gear, which is also chain, uh, chain, uh, turning another gear here. So here's our first gear train and it's an 8 tooth turning a 40 tooth. So the first thing I'm going to do is recognize that's one there. And then we've got another axle connected to the 40 which goes through to a pulley uh, on the back here. And then we've got our V belt or our belt then connected to another one here. And they've given us the size of those pulleys in diameters. This one's 12, um, we could say millimeters I suppose. And this one here is 22. So this is smaller, this is larger. And then the axle then comes across through the middle and connects to another drivetrain. This time it's made from gears. And we've got a large gear of 20 then connecting to or meshing with a small tooth of 8. So the first thing to do is to recognize which of these uh, gear trains are actually uh, increased gear trains, which will increase speed, and which ones will reduce speed. Now, if we remember back to our, um, our cycling analogy, if I just draw myself a little um, sort of diagram over here, if I draw a small gear, which represents the gear on the front of my bike, draw a line through it, these represent the pedals, oh, there they are, and then if I draw a, a large gear at the back, when we put a chain between those, we know that that from our uh, timeline of bicycle is about first gear or it's a reduction gear, it makes it easy to pedal here. This is spinning quickly, this one's um, not spinning very fast at all. So that's basically what we've got here. We've got a driven gear being the eight tooth. This is the one connected to the motor. Remember we always talk about driven and driver. Sorry, this is the driver, mixing it up totally. The driver gear, so this is the gear that's actually driving the other one. It's connected to the motor. So the eight tooth is the driver gear and the driven gear, the one that's being driven by the driver, is 40. So there's our 8 tooth being the driver, and there's our 40 tooth being the driven. So we'll adopt a bit of a convention here. Let's um, just draw ourselves a little sort of T-shape there. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to make um, a label for this. I'm going to call this one the driven or another name for the driven might be output. And on the other side, we're going to put uh, another convention for the driver or the input, or if you like, the power. So if you look back over here, which was the driver? The driver was the eight tooth, so we put eight in the column underneath driver. And then the driven was the 40, so we put 40 under or in the column for the driven. So this is a ratio, a ratio of 8 teeth as to 40 teeth. And we know that it's a reduction ratio because it's reducing its speed that this is spinning at. This is spinning quickly, this is spinning slowly, or slower. Very important to remember that. So we need to simplify um, this ratio now to make it um, down to 1 on one side. So if we divide 8 by 8, it turns into 1. If we divide 40 by 8, that is obviously is 5. So we have a reduction gearing ratio of 5 is to 1. Reducing. We better write that in. Reduction. Knowing that, let's go back to our diagram over here. And it tells us that the motor at this point here, connected to this axle, to here, is running at 180 RPM. But after it goes through this first reduction gear, the axle spinning off the bottom or through the center of this one is going to be less. How much less? Well, if we have a look here, we said it was a ratio of 5 is to 1 reduction gear. So that means we need to uh, divide our revs per minute. So 180 is what the motor is currently doing, but it needs to reduce its speed because it's a reduction gear. So we divide that by 5 equals, of course, 30 revolutions per minute. So that means 
we now have uh, instead of this axle here spinning at 180 this axle here is now spinning at 30 revolutions per minute so that's the first stage of the first gear train the second thing is to work out the second uh, gear train or pulley train I suppose you could call it and so we'll do that uh, in exactly the same way come across over here first of all draw myself a little diagram now is this going to be a reduction or an increase in the pulley train we've got a small driver and a large driven a 12 diameter driver a 22 diameter driven that sounds like the same diagram we've had before there's my driver which is 12 and my driven which is slightly bigger is 22 if I draw a chain between them like my bike analogy pedal that's the driver that's the driven it's small in the front it's large on the back therefore once again we have a reduction so do our same procedure before as we did before draw ourselves two columns on the left is the driven or the output on the right is the driver or the input and let's just put that in there so the driver was 12 and the driven was 22 and this is a ratio so let's simplify that to simplify to get this down to 1 we divide that by 12 equals 1 the way we do this side is to do that side so 22 divided by 12 I think is 1.8 sounds about right so once again we have a reduction ratio of 1.8 is to 1 so if it's reduction we have to divide again so we take the 30 revolutions per minute that was coming out of the axle remember this here is spinning at 30 revolutions and we divide it by the reduction ratio between the two so back to here so 30 rpm divided by 1.8 equals 16.6 revolutions oops sorry 16.6 revolutions per minute okay so we've done the the two um, drivetrains one for the gears and one for the pulley now let's look at this last one okay so we've determined that this shaft now or this axle coming through here is spinning at 16.6 which means this gear is spinning at 16.6 but we've got another gear connected to it and it's smaller so let's do our little diagram again the small gear and we've got a large gear now I'm going to do it um, I'll do it this way I'll do it this way so it looks fairly similar I've got a small gear and a large gear the small gear is the eight tooth the large gear is the 20 tooth but we need to be very careful which one is the driver the large tooth gear is the one connected to the axle that's spinning so it's the driver so we put the pedals on the driver now what have we got do we have a reduction gear with small drivers or large driven no we've got now the opposite large driver to small driven which means this is not a reduction gear ratio anymore but it is an increasing ratio it's an increase by how much well let's do it again let's put our table over here or our columns same convention we had before the driven or the output over the driver or the input let's have a quick check so the driver was the 20 teeth 20 there and the driven was the 8. Once again, simplify. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 20 divided by 8 is 2.5. So now we've got to remember we have a ratio uh, which is an increasing ratio of 2.5 or 2.5 2 is to 1. So therefore, we had 16.6 coming out of that axle. But because this is an increase ratio, it's no longer divide. 16.6 .6 RPM this time, whoops, where are we? Multiplied by 
2.5 because 2.5 was the increasing ratio which gives us a total of where is it 41.5 revolutions per minute okay so looking just from the top again first thing to do work out uh, whether it's a reduction ratio or not draw your columns label your columns make sure they're always the same driven or output driver and input put your total teeth in divide the um, together to the end of one on one side of the ratio and then work out what the ratio is going to be if it's a reduction ratio you divide you do it for the second one and then if it's an increase ratio which this time it is here because we know that it's a large driver and a small driven then it's a multiplied by that ratio 16.6 times 2.5 okay i hope that's been helpful guys and uh, hopefully you have some success success